So good evening, everybody. Uh, we are live, and we can start. Over to Kailash. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome all of you, uh, the followers in the field. And uh, this is uh, a webinar which uh, was a brainchild of Dr. Parag Sanjeeti, and uh, uh, he thought of bringing in all together the Asia Pacific Arthroplasty Society. And we have done uh, uh, about uh, four webinars before this. We have done about these are all about the dilemmas which we face in our day-to-day -day, uh, knee arthroplasty uh, practice, and we have been uh, finished. We have, we have finished with uh, CR versus uh, uh, retaining versus uh, posterior stabilized knee, uh, unicondylar versus total knee, and uh, last time it was mechanical versus kinematic alignment, and this time it's going to be the what Shakespeare is to say to do or not to do. It's going to be the patla which we are going to discuss whether we are going to resurface it or we are not going to resurface it. And uh, I would like to uh, welcome all of you, uh, Dr. Uh, David Barrett, Dr. Gurwa Reddy, Dr. Song, Dr. Ricky, Dr. Parak Sancheti, Dr. Nicholas. And uh, uh, I would like uh, my colleague, Dr. Sunny, to formally introduce uh, all of you guys uh, and welcome all. Over to you, Sunny. Yeah. Thank you, Kailash. Yeah, I. Yeah, I welcome all the uh, delegates on. Uh, am I seen? Sorry. Yes, very well. I I would like to welcome all the delegate uh, all the star faculty for this uh, dilemma series. Uh, first, I would like to introduce Professor Song. Uh, he is a stalwart in orthopedics with more than 30 years experience. He is a professor of orthopedics at the Chonam National University of uh, Korea. Uh, he's been training, uh, he has training has been done in orthopedics a long back in 1987 and he's been training a lot of young and budding orthoplasty surgeons from Korea. We welcome you, Professor Song. Thank you very much. Our next faculty, yeah, our next faculty today is Dr. David Barrett. Uh, I have seen him speaking in a lot of conferences. He's amazing, he's a star personality. He's a senior specialist knee surgeon in UK with his formal training done from US. And UK, he's a lead consultant at the Southampton University, and he's the professor of orthopedic engineering over there. Uh, professor Barrett has developed a number of innovative procedures and to address complex problems in knee surgery for the benefit of the patient. And his operative practice is based in the Southampton as well as in London. We welcome you, Professor Barrett. Good to be with you. Our uh, next star faculty is Dr. Gurwa Reddy. Uh, he's, he's the managing director and a chief orthopedic surgeon at the Sunshine Hospitals in Hyderabad. He's an, uh, he's an eminent speaker and internationally recognized Indian orthopedic surgeon uh, who has taken great efforts to popularize joint replacement surgery and uh, amongst the budding orthopedic surgeons as well as amongst the pa uh, patients. And he's the founder member and he was an organizing secretary. He was an organizing secretary of the Ish Society, and he's been a mentor to many young budding arthroplasty surgeons in India. We welcome you, Professor Guru Reddy. Thank you. Our next faculty is Professor Nicholas Budiparma. He has been uh, uh, he's been the current president of EPAS and APKS. He is an Indonesian orthopedic surgeon with specialty in arthroplasty, and we welcome you, Professor Nicholas for this current uh, webinar. Next. Yeah, uh, I welcome rest all the delegates uh, uh, and, the, and other faculty for the current webinar. And I'm handing over it to Professor Song. Yeah, uh, before that, uh, I will just like to make a few yeah. comments. And uh, good evening, everybody. And it's a great pleasure to welcome all of you for this uh, big dilemma on patella to resurface or not to resurface. And for this, we have some uh, great faculty. You know, we have Professor David Barrett from Southampton, who is going to try and convince us why should we resurface the patella. And then Dr. Guruva Reddy is actually going to try and tell us how not to, why not to resurface the patella. And it's going to be really a great debate. This debate, I think, will probably not have an answer at the end of this webinar, but I'm sure there will be some more messages, some guidelines on how we should develop our thought process. 
because this debate can go on till the cows come home. So it's a never ending debate, but it will be really nice to hear the perspectives of Professor David Barrett, who is a, a world renowned authority in joint replacement surgery. He has designed uh, knee joints and takes great interest in bioengineering. And uh, he has uh, uh, lectured at many, many conferences and is absolutely a name to reckon with, who will tell us why to resurface. And Dr. Guruwar Reddy is also a very great arthroplasty surgeon. He does more than 4,000 knee replacements every year at his center. And I believe he doesn't resurface any of them, but I must ask his son uh, quietly whether he does some. But let us see what is his reasoning that uh, why he doesn't resurface any of those 4,000 patellas. And for this moderation, we have Professor Song, who is uh, the founder and the godfather of Asia Pacific Knee Society. So we, he will be moderating it. Before we hand it over to Professor Song for moderation, I want to call upon Dr. Nico to please say a few words. Professor Nicholas Pudiparma uh, has a unique position today. He is the president of Asia Pacific Knee Society and the Asia Pacific Arthroplasty, Arthroplasty Society, both of the hosts for today's webinar and as well as the Asia Society. So I don't think anybody uh, in this world has a distinction of uh, being a president for three societies at one time. And over to Professor Nicholas, who has this unique position of three presidents at one time. Professor Nicholas, we will be happy to hear your views on this debate. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Parak Sanchati. It's a good evening or a good afternoon, uh, depends on where you are located. As the current presidents of APES, Asia Middle East and APKS, it is a distinct honor to welcome you to the this is the first uh, webinar under the collaborations between the two uh, societies, the APES and the APKS. All these webinars are possible due to the hard work of uh, Professor uh, Parak Sanchetti, Dr. Kailis Patil, and uh, Suni uh, Gugale, and Dr. Ashok Shyam. And Parak and I foresee this webinar to be the first of many since one of our common goals is to unite all the arthroplasty surgeons in the Asia Pacific. I think by next, is, uh, our plan is to collaborate with the Asia, making us the largest group in Asia Pacific and Middle East. So between Parak, Rami, uh, Professor Ike Song, uh, Yang Wen, and myself, we will work out the best cooperations uh, between the APES, Asia, and APKS in the near future. And I'm so happy uh, to Parak, and uh, because I'm always here, be here in all the webinar every two weeks. So it's amazing every two weeks. This is our, our fourth, and it's, uh, it is very helpful for the young surgeons, and all, not only young surgeons, but also the, for the rest of the world <clears throat> to have this, uh, this uh, webinar. So I hope that you enjoy today's uh, webinar, which is a controversial topic, you know, since uh, it is still the debate in all over the world about whether you resurface or not. And um, we know that we're going to hear from uh, the master himself, in UK and Australia, it's, uh, the, the, the resurfacing is picking up, increasing, while the rest of the world are still decreasing or very few. So today we have the two experts, which does not need any introductions. They are the world famous. So my I uh, uh, share this uh, to uh, Professor Song as a moderator, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Song to conduct yes, uh, excellent speech, both uh, Dr. Sanchetti and uh, Dr. Nico. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ike Song from Korea. Uh, this is a very interesting session, uh, talking to patellar resurfacing, to do or not to do in toral yasoplasty. Uh, Dr. David Brutt from England will talk about resurfacing for 15 minutes. Afterwards, Dr. Groba Reddy will talk about non-resurfacing for 15 minutes. Before, I will... Uh, just, uh, I will just summarize uh, introduction. Dr. Santitu, do you see my slide? Uh, not yet. Uh, you will just press on share the screen. And, okay. Uh, uh, mm. 
Uh, Ashok, uh, can you help uh, Professor Song to share the screen? Okay, let me go. So just uh, come out again. Just just stop sharing. Yeah, now we can see. Now you can see. Yeah, very well. Okay. Yes. Just make full screen. The next button. Just give me a little bit of time. Okay. Perfect. Okay. As you know, the role of patellar resurfacing in trolley arthroplasty is still controversial. Uh, resurfacing and uh, retention has a uh, still uh, debating in terms of uh, uh, which one is better or uh, there are no differences. Main topic is a uh, residual anterior knee pain and anterior knee creptus. However, uh, some many Americans do resurface and uh, they claim better result in uh, resurfacing, but most European, probably Asian uh, surgeon do not resurface patella uh, with a good clinical result. That is why we have a still debate to do or not to do of a patella. So briefly, patella resurfacing has a mild anterior knee pain about 5%. Main disadvantages, this is in my opinion, additional surgery time is a five to 10 minutes Sometimes it's technically very difficult to get adequate patella height and uh, even or parallel cut. I'm talking to retention, not to do resurface of patella, is a procedure <clears throat> mainly composed of peripatella neuroplasty, osteophyte around the patella is removed, and surface smoothing. However, its disadvantage until now is a mild anterior knee pain, 10 to 15%, and mild anterior knee pain, anterior knee creptus, 15 to 20%. However, this kind of uh, uh, mild complications is uh, going out after three to four years after surgery. Most of uh, those kinds of symptoms are non-significant or ignorable according to my clinical experience. So I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, uh, paper. It's uh, uh, published 2019. It's very interesting. Resurfacing versus non-resurfacing of patella in one stage bilateral toral arthroplasty, prospective randomized clinical trial. 60 patients finally included up to five years follow-up. One side done uh, resurfacing, the other side non resurfacing. As you see here, at five years, clinical score 92 point resurfacing, 90%, 90 point non resurfacing. Clinical uh, statistical analysis very significant. And the function score 80, 78, also better in uh, resurfacing. So they claimed superior outcome of a patellar resurfacing group. And the patellar femoral characteristics, as you see here, anterior knee pain, 5% in the resurfacing, 23% in non-resurfacing. Patella clunk, 10%, 40% respectively. Also lower complication in resurfacing group. Here's another papers claim uh, better, uh, no difference between uh, Surfacing and resurfacing and non resurfacing. 50 patient, 50 cases. See here, even if it's a short uh, follow up, knee society score you can see 26, 25. No differences in the statistical analysis. And the pain score 8.6, 8.1, 8 no differences. They claimed no significant difference between two groups. There are other papers written in uh, India, as you see here. They claimed KSS score, as you see here, 48, 49. No differences. Feller patella score, 24, 25. No differences. So 
until now, talking to patellar resurfacing, to do or not to do, is a lot of uh, issue, a, a big issue, still controversial and debatable. So I want to hear expert ideas and opinion and clinical experience from uh, Barack England and uh, Graba Ready. Dr. David Barrett, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go, Professor. <clears throat> okay, so, please go. I, I yeah, just need you to stop sharing and then I can share. Mm -hmm. You need to stop sharing. Okay. Perfect. Okay, that's great. And I think I am going to go here. Okay, guys, can you see that? We're all good. Okay, very good. Great. Okay, well, it's a huge pleasure to join you guys, and it's great to talk with Dr. Reddy, who I know uh, from many years, who has a great clinical experience in this. And so um, it's, it's whether to do this or not. And what I would say, if I just uh, get you there, is that I think this is the key to the satisfied patient. Whether we resurface or not, how we deal with the patellofemoral joint is really key. It is the soul of the knee. And it's responsible for things like anterior knee pain and then some of the functions that our patients are complaining about now in terms of climbing says high flexion. Um, if that's not right, uh, then the patient is not happy. So it's, it may not just be about patellofemoral resurfacing, it may be how we treat the actual extensor apparatus. And it may end up that uh, Grava and I may end up agreeing about some things. Because if we take the data and we look at 128 comparison papers, 24 meta uh, uh, analysis paper, we find that really resurfacing, just adding plastic, may not make a difference to anterior knee pain. What I'm saying is now we're a lot more sophisticated about how we treat the extensor apparatus. And so we know that quite a high proportion of patients will report anterior knee pain, whether the knee is resurfaced or not. But looking at clinical experience with our higher performance patients, we may find that we should look again at some particular problems. And so we may not dealing with black and white here, but we may uh, have an agreement based on some of our sophisticated, more sophisticated knowledge about the function of the patellofemoral apparatus, not just the joint. So in terms of kinematics of the knee, we don't know so much. And what we know, and, and those of you who have heard me speak before will know that we've developed this model that allows us to appreciate where most of the stresses are in that uh, extensor hood. And what we can tell you is that the patella is part of that, but it's not all of it. So it's probably why just resurfacing it may not make a big difference whether we resurface or not, because in fact, it's a whole soft tissue envelope. And you can see here, the soft tissue envelope wraps around uh, the knee itself, where it's around the trochlea. And in fact, the patellofemoral contact forces may not be particular high. And so you can see in this video, as we go through flexion, the pressure on the patella is mostly blue and green, which is physiological forces, which again is why it might not make a difference if we have a polyethylene surface or a native surface. And as our patients get more demanding, you can see why the extensor apparatus, or if I call it the third space, becomes more important. This x-ray would have been satisfactory, say 20 years ago, with, if you like, um, uh, just 90 degrees of flexion, which meant most of the pressure went through the patellofemoral joint. Either that was bone or plastic, so there wasn't much uh, complaints of anterior knee pain in the studies of the 80s and 90s. If we take a modern Indian patient, a high demand knee with a good deal of flexion, you can see that most of the pressure actually comes through the extensor hood. That is the soft tissue around the patella and the patella itself drops into the intercondylar notch. So if we look at some of our studies in Southampton, you can see that most of the loading isn't really in the patellofemoral joint, it's actually in the soft tissue around the patellofemoral joint, particularly in the quads expansion. And you can see here that as a patella goes over into flexion, you can see that in this area here, you're getting some redness as the quads uh, 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 um, expansion directly impinges on the knee replacement. 
And so in many ways, it's the design of the trochlea that might make more difference than whether we resurface the patella or not. Now, if we understand the patella femoral mechanics, the key angle is about 30 degrees. Before 30 degrees, the movement of the patella is very variable on the flat surface of the trochlea. And, around about and it's guided by the retinacular ligaments. And then about 30 degrees, it commits to the groove of the notch there. And we see that it becomes tightly constrained and anatomically stable. So it has two characters, very loose to start with, and then very controlled beforehand. And the other thing we need to understand is that, if you like, that we see two aspects here, just to remind you, it's very flexible uh, when we bend the knee, um, uh, sorry, very flexible when we straighten the knee, but very constrained when we bend the knee. And so it has many different routes as well. The first track was with the foot straight, if we were to externally rotate our foot, the next step we took, the patella would start on the lateral side of the knee. It would be constrained by the medial collateral ligament and then pass into the central groove. So next step, if we internally rotate the foot, as you can see the picture on the upper right, we see the patella starts on the medial side of the knee and then travels uh, with the uh, lateral retinaculum to commit to the central groove. So we can see that in three different steps in the same individual, the patella femoral tracking will be different each time. Now, if we have a laterally placed tibial tubercle, you can see irrespective of the position of the foot, the, the patella would always track on the lateral side. So in terms of what that means, is that it means that a, a trochlea of the femur, that is the design of our knees, will have to act as a funnel. And it may be that function is more important as to whether we resurface the patella or not, more the design of our knee implant. And we know that there are some knee designs that are more patella friendly uh, than others. And this largely comes from the designs in the 80s and 90s, where we had a high degree of patella subluxation and, and surgeons were performing lateral release in 30% in order to control or capture the patella. So that led to a design that was a very deep trochlear groove. In fact, it was absolutely opposite to the way we wanted the patella to be because it gave us constraint in early flexion, which is exactly opposite to what the true uh, picture was in nature. So if you like that led to anterior knee pain, it was over constraint of the patella. And so now, uh, if we understand that better, irrespective of whether we resurface the patella or not, we end up with a much more physiological trochlear uh, anatomy, which means we can work better with the patella femoral articulation. And so if you see more modern designs now reduce the trochlear uh, uh, size, and so that means there's less impingement on the extensor hood. So what are the challenges with patella then? Does resurfacing make a difference? And we saw from Professor Song's presentation uh, that essentially it's very difficult to tell the difference uh, uh, using KSS. And all the studies that have used survivorship show there's no real difference in terms of resurfacing or not resurfacing. But now we're a little more uh, knowledgeable about maybe in the long term, we know that sometimes you see a higher rate of patellofemoral pain at 12 years plus in unresurfaced patellas. And we begin to look at the design of the patella implant to see if it can give us some better function by designing it better. So there are many different designs of patella surface. And when there are many different designs, we know often there's not a good answer, okay? So if we look at some of the mechanics of what happens when we uh, put a knee replacement in, we can see that, and if you look at your sagittal uh, views when you go home of your knee replacements, you'll see that this angle after a knee replacement is often like that. So we often see that the patella will tip up in extension after a knee replacement. And you can see it lifts up like that. And that's a non-physiological uh, aspect of a total knee replacement. And it's non-physiological for the extensor hood. Now, so if we look at our patella uh, uh, in coronal outline, you can see there is the resection uh, level of the patella. It is in fact a natural medialized dome. 
And we can replicate that in the polyethylene of our implants. And you might say, well, that's fine. If we look at a slightly different design, we can try and improve the position, uh, the efficiency of our existing patellofemoral joints to get a better result. And so we can produce a medialized dome in a more anatomically shaped patella. So if we look in the sagittal outline, you can see that's our patella here. It has quite an unusual design, which is certainly not a dome from the side. So remember all our studies before have been looking at a dome patella. But if we reproduce that sagittal outline with an anatomic patella, we can show significant differences. And this might be the thing that people uh, could be interested in. If we take a medialized dome, because of the shape of the patella, when the quads pull, there will be a tipping force and the medialized dome will go into extension, which is unphysiological. If we take a redesigned anatomic patella with a, uh, the quads pull, with the greater surface area uh, on the front of the patella, we will not see that uh, little tip. As a result, we can show that we can control that patella flexion. So this is the first time we're designing for the patella implant to improve the efficiency of the quads mechanism. And you can see that we can do that. Uh, if we look at the uh, angles, how we can control that till makes a difference to the efficiency of a quads mechanism. So if we look at a standard dome in red, against a remodeled uh, patella femoral insert in blue, you can see that an anatomic patella design means that the quads force is almost nine or 10% more efficient. So we're actually getting a better result from resurfacing the patella to give better quads efficiency. And so <clears throat> maybe that's the reason for thinking about resurfacing and then why, what about the difficult cases when you are faced with knees that have patella baja? And I know that's quite common in Asian countries, in India, in China. Patella baja is often something you're faced with in the preoperative phase. So perhaps you might think of resurfacing in these difficult cases where the anatomy of the patella is compromised. And so here we've got impingement of the patella on the tibial plastic and there's overload on the extensor hood. So we know that patella clung, and Professor Song talked about this, is caused by the scar tissue. It's also caused by the uh, uh, presence of large boxes, which we're designing uh, away from nowadays to make the box much more narrow and to avoid that patella catching on the front of the knee. So what happens in patella baja with an abnormal patella, and you can see this is an unresurfaced patella, is that as you go to flexion, there's increasing tightness in the lateral extensor hood as the knee flexes. And as that uh, retinaculum tightens, we get a tilt. And in severe cases, the patella will eventually dislocate. The anatomy of the patella is not matched to the trochlea. So we get that dislocation. So here might be uh, an occasion to resurface to improve patellofemoral function. So we can resurface the patella, which normalizes the surface, which allows engagement of the patella and stability of the patellofemoral joint to prevent dislocation. We can actually choose to resurface high on the posterior surface of the patella to increase the virtual patella height. We can use a CR uh, total knee with a longer trochlear groove and a tibial uh, insert with an anterior cutout. We've got to be careful that we resect the tibia properly um, and we've got to avoid uh, uh, internal uh, femoral rotation. So here is a case where you might choose to resurface the patella because of the abnormal anatomy of the patella itself. And having said that, does it make a difference? Are some of the design changes improving? Well, if we look at these four matched studies, what they've done is taken a, a new design against an existing design, which is Sigma. And you can see that in all four cases, redesigning the patellar articulation, redesigning the trochlear groove has allowed a significant reduction in uh, patellar femoral crepitus, a uh, significant reduction in uh, clunking and a better functional outcome. So that's four different studies show that redesigning uh, can make that a lot more efficient and reduce patellar femoral symptoms. So, to say there's no difference is probably true of those studies in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, but in redesign needs, we might be seeing an improvement. So the debate starts all over again. 
So just to finish, what I want to say is that uh, we've talked, we know about the first and the second spaces, which are the flexion and the extension gaps. But I want to think of the third space or the third gap, um, because this is the patellofemoral joint and the extensor hood. And so when you next go back to your knee replacement, whether you resurface it or not, as well as the flexion gap, think about how much bone you're taking away from the trochlea. Because if you think about it, we're taking, if you take 10 millimeters of bone and replace it with six millimeters of metal, which is the average trochlear thickness of an implant, you're actually understuffing it by four millimeters. And we wouldn't accept a four millimeter mismatch in flexion extension gap balancing. Sometimes it can be other, in the other way. In a small woman, we take away two millimeters of bone from a trochlear and replace it by six millimeters of metal. So we're overstuffing it by four millimeters. And this is irrespective of whether we resurface it or not. And you might say, what difference does that make? Well, here we've got a perfect resection in green. What happens if we overstuff it, which is what happens in the blue there. You can see the blue uh, uh, is the overstuffing effect. So overstuffing the third space means that the, the tendon has to travel much further, seven millimeters, and it increases the quad pressure by 1.7 times. So that means the patient complains of tightness around the front of the knee and doesn't like climbing stairs. If we understuff it, that is uh, reduce the, the height, then we introduce laxity in the quads tendon and that has to work 2.3 times harder for extension. So these are the patients that feel tired after they've uh, walked up a flight of stairs because they're working much harder. So in summary, it's a complex the debate. I believe it's not either or. I think we have to be aware that a lot of the studies are now 30, 20 years old and uh, with older implants. And we understand a lot more about that third space and the function of the patellofemoral joint now. And so I agree there may be no difference right now, but there may be some specific indications about the role of resurfacing where the patella is deformed or maltracking or, mal or indeed where you see patella baja. I, I think it's a contentious subject. You can take America in the West where it's 100% resurfacing uh, through to UK and the Europe, which is 50% way to the East, to India, uh, to China, Asia, where it's 0%. So, What's interesting is you can see an increasing rate of patella resurfacing now through the UK and Europe as we've become aware of some of the advantages. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. David Barat. It's an excellent presentation focusing on uh, biomechanical study and patellofemoral joint. So there's, a, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, question and comment afterwards. Now move to... Uh, Second presentation, Dr. Groba, ready? Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready since I was born. Okay, please go. <laughs> right, here we go. Ready is always ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, very well, right. very well. Yeah, okay, good, 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 okay, right. Uh, David, uh, excellent presentation. Nothing less more than a person of your standing. And uh, now let me take you through my argument of uh, why I should not do, or everyone should not do a, a replacement uh, of patella. So, right. Patellofemoral complications are the most common cause of dissatisfaction after total knee arthroplasty. Anterior knee pain has been found in 6 to 25 percent in the literature after primary arthroplasty. There has always been a debate in the arthroplasty fraternity to resurface or not to resurface the patella. The controversy, the debate on the value of patella resurfacing has become like the discussion of religion and politics according to Krakow, I fully agree with you, because these things are perennial and perpetual. So there is no end for that. Either you are a Catholic or a Protestant, either you are a Democratic or a Republican. That's all as simple as that. Or you are a conservative or labor. I don't know which party David belongs to. So even in 2020, no consensus. Another 
thing about Patella I love is this Patella debate is a great filler in any conference. If you have some time, if you want to fill that, just put Patella there. So people will keep on arguing for the next two hours. And, but the wide variation in surgeon's attitudes towards the resurfacing. So I will start with my experience. I've been doing the arthroplasty for the last 20 years, 20 years, 20, 30 years plus in India. In my last 25 years experience, I have not replaced or resurfaced a single patella, let me underline, in over 30,000 total replacements. And whether Parag can send his detectives to Sunshine Hospital to see, I don't know even patella. I, the only one I know is uh, this round button, which is my ear pad case. Only thing is, we got to ensure the optimal component sizing of the femur and tibia and the rotations, patella tracking, and the thickness, where the, David rightly said, it is the overstuffing, my friends, that makes all the nuisance around patella femoral joint. But can David give any guarantee that by putting a simple plastic button, he is going to be a guarantee that he's not going to overstuff the joint? No. Now, coming to our experience, the patella femoral outcomes with Kujala anterior knee pain score over 3,500 patient scores recorded very scientifically till date. And another important thing is I do different knee designs over the last 20 years. The almost 12 companies starting from Biomed, Smith & Nephew, Zimmer, Depew, Buccal Papas, a striker, you name it, we do it. So that also gives me extra uh, leverage to argue the case. That means it is not a design specific problem. So in the 20 years, or more than 30,000 knees, a single surgeon with a 10 to 12 design different implants, the anterior knee pain is minimal as I show you. This paper we presented in International Society of Orthopedic Conference in Sydney. And uh, I'm very happy to welcome Parag also into this elite group where Mayo Clinic, Hospital for Special Surgery, Endo Clinic, all the other people are there. And we are supposed to meet in uh, uh, Israel this year, but we couldn't. And Parag, welcome to this group. And uh, we are there that we presented this paper. So in our experience, you can see that uh, our anterior knee pain is 0.7%. This is 27. Uh, okay. Patellar clunk, three. Lateral facet impingement, one. Patellar instability, two. Patellar tilt, six. Extensor mechanism rupture six. And you can see that one to five years, we got 1,800 knees, five to 10, 700 knees. So big, good number of things. When I wanted to present this paper or publish this paper and wrote right to guys in Journal of Orthoplast or anything, they will say, without match or cohort, you can't publish. I don't want to publish this paper if such is the case, because I don't want to replace Patella for the sake of presenting a paper. So that is the crux of it. So 95% patients have satisfactory scores, but too excellent, without a single patella being touched. You can see that mean follow-up period of the study was 8.9 years. This included 2,500 females, 945 males. The mean Kujala score increased from 32 to 83. There was a statistically significant improvement in the post-operative course and OKS scores. None of the patients required secondary patella resurfacing due to anterior knee care. <clears throat> the only one patient I remember uh, is a hefty 110 kgs man. I did butter, bilateral knees. He kept on bothering me about that. And I sent him to Ashok Raj Gopal, who replaced both patella. And the blame game comfortably shifted from Hyderabad to Delhi. So he started uh, um, harassing Ashok instead of Guru. That's all it happened. He never had any pain relief out of that. So implants used in this study, you can see Depew, Smith & Nephew, Zimmer, Stryker, Biomed, all the components of companies in the world are being used. This is a six and 10 year follow-up of a Skyline X-rays. You can see Patella is nicely sitting there where it is supposed to. And that is where I wanted to again take David's point, which he has very nicely illustrated. He said that third space, and that is patella femoral space, natural patella femoral mechanics. David, I give that to you. That's why I respect that third space. I don't violate that. That's why I don't want to put any button or anything there. As far as 
my patella tracks in the trochlea i'm fine with that so i'm respecting your third space let me tell you our surgical technique like all others do we do osteophytectomy and then we we'll do the circumcision of the or neuro denervation of the patella and we take off whatever the bumpy areas of the patella make it a flat and seldom we need to do lateral release if your rotations and all that are normal why i don't resurface first of all whether it's a david's paper or somebody else paper all these patellar proponent papers are all standing on one flimsy virtual symptom that is anterior knee pain can anybody tell me what exactly is anterior knee pain and where is it coming from and nobody has got an answer or a finger to that and everybody says it's a multifactorial then how can you isolate a resurfacement of the patella as a source of the pain and as i rightly said to retain the native patella femoral biomechanics of the patient and avoid the complications of patella resurfacing i do not resurface and another important point i'm sure all of you must have seen whenever you open a joint post totally for whatever the reasons are within a year let us say whether it is instability or infection you see a beautiful a thick fibrous tissue curtain on the back of the patella whether you resurface it or not yeah, sometimes you have to dig out to find where the your so called plastic button is there so then as david was arguing in the last slide of a new design patella what is the rationale whether you put a dome patella or a flat patella or whether you resurface not resurface end of the day a beautiful fibrous curtain which is a excursion which is doing the excursion on the trochlear group i'm sure you all must have been wondering where is the patella button whenever you open a joint and then another point is quadriceps length and extensor mechanism excursion in asian population who squat so this is the basic premise for resurfacing the to avoid anterior knee pain and reoperation of the primary tk the whole argument is built on anterior knee pain i have not seen any other paper arguing we have to resurface the patella on following grounds first time i'm seeing david arguing or putting his point that the long term 10 years beyond patella research might make a difference but david how can you prove that what all the things that can go wrong they will go wrong in the first two years after 10 years there is no way your patellar button is going to make any difference because there will be nice beautiful curtain formed by the time the patient is resigned to his fate whether it is a minor instability or mid flex instability and 10 years post you just cannot show me or prove me that patella makes a difference so this is like a, a single pillar anterior knee pain and you are putting the whole knee replacement on the top of it which is a very flimsy place so anterior knee pain i understand as it is a multifactorial as david rightly pointed out again and again over stuffing of the anterior compartment is the one which is the culprit and patellar mal tracking component mal position and the soft tissue irritation and altered kinematics due to mal alignment or impingement can anybody tell me all these five points are addressed by patellar resurfacement the answer is no all these factors are avoidable surgical related technique related issues which anybody can take care even with retention of the native patella in fact by retention of the native patella i am respecting the third space and i am not doing anything extraordinary and another point is when i resurfacement cannot address any of these problems why should i replace so putting a plastic button on the patella cannot answer any of these five questions so my argument is as far as you do not over stuff the patella as far as you do not mal track the patella as far as you do not put a mal rotated implants of the femoral tibia the patella resurfacement doesn't make an iota of difference now let us from see the from another perspective incidence of anterior knee pain with or without resurfacing the anterior knee pain persists in 30% a new onset anterior knee pain develops in 10% after totally with patellar resurfacing again from run out stable and you can see the irony of these uh, findings that means even 
after the patella resurfacing the patella knee pain and knee pain is still persisting in one third of the patients then my friends where is the rational of operating a patellar button with an argument that it will address the anterior knee pain there is nothing here another paper from berg again anterior knee pain persists in 10% and new onset ankle pain develops in 28% after tcr with patellar resurfacing and another perspective secondary resurfacing does not alleviate anterior knee pain in 50% cases again another argument if you argue or if you believe prove force me to believe that the anterior knee pain is because of not resurfacing then all secondary resurfacing should be hunky dory they all should address the problem and the patient should run out of the theater happy man and sue the guy like me who has not resurfaced his patella but lo and behold the literature is completely against that a hospital called hypothesis 55% unchanged or deterioration first paper second paper again 34% no change 7% worsen third paper deverland paper again only 0.4% out of 2900 knees only 0.4% required surgery for anti knee pain this is exactly my my findings minority had any improvement with second resurfacing concluded that initial patella resurfacing is not required a wonderful paper so all these three papers prove my point again as i said it is like a barking at a wrong tree if your anterior knee pain is the culprit and you not resurfacing the patella is contributing to that these three papers should have produced the results otherwise so my friends even javed parveji came out of infections and produced a paper resurfacing is not the solution for all anterior knee pain cases that means i am not saying that anterior knee pain does not exist it is exists but it is overstated and over diagnosed and mal contributed that means the etiology is not because of the resurfacement so anterior knee pain and resurfacing if you come to the conclusions rates of secondary resurfacement of patella are artificially higher again due to low threshold of surgeons performing revision for akp just like the unicondylar or knee replacement surgeons unicondylar knee replacement patient comes back with pain in 6 months okay let's go and do totally because you got a, a wonderful solution and so you go and replace it and again here the secondary resurfacing of patella is a very very artificial higher because gurwaradi doesn't replace the patella he goes to parag or david and immediately you can put a point on his pain and you say that gurwa has not replaced the patella i will replace the patella so this sort of uh, artificially elevated indications have become a norm of the day and why opt for a non resurfacing patella plasty i will come from the other angle now by replacing the patella i have more problems than not resurfacing the patella as some people argue by getting into marriage i have more problems than staying single so let me be single so to negate the potentially catastrophic complications patella fracture infection patella avascular necrosis mal tracking loosening patella polyvere all of these complications rates as high as 10% especially indian knees they are like papadams very thin patella i don't want to touch these patella so you can see that now complications of post resurfacing you can see all of them are there patella fracture polyethylene wear and cold flow component dislocation component loosening polyethylene fracture all these things i can avoid safely by not even looking at the patella and as i told you anybody who opened the joint after one year will see a beautiful fibrous curtain of the patella then why or what is the need i got a hypothesis which i'm i got to see david slides i might be tempted to go to london and request him to help me out my hypothesis is because of the squatting habits of asians right from childhood the quadriceps excursion of uh, asians are much more almost uh, more than 2 cm this is my hypothesis than western population so then what happens is in indian or asian population even when the knee is flexed to 135 degrees that's almost like a uh, squatting habit there is no significant uh, patellofemoral forces in, a, in other words there is a force on the posterior because the hamstring tightness if you see all indian surgeons will agree with that whoever patient comes post operatively he will 
point at the back of the popliteal fossa pain their hamstring spasms rather than anterior knee pain whereas western population because they never squat i feel that the quadriceps excursion is limited as a result the whenever you flex beyond 90 tremendous forces are there at this part at the patellar femoral joint and as dr song showed in the heavy population which is western population this lack of uh, quadriceps excursion in addition to the weight might be contributing to the anterior knee pain but it is not available in asian population i wish that david can show me a path where we can prove by some uh, what a digital uh, pointers in quadriceps uh, excursion of the quadriceps in asian population vis a vis western population uh, you can see that that is the thing which is more in western population coming to the our good friends from north america i'm glad that no american faculty is here so i can be a bit bold and audacious if you see americans replace 90% the europe david's uh, group is around 44% australia 60% and in the rest of the uh, countries even the whole scandinavian countries 2% and asia less than 1% i'm sure this is the standard so why this worldwide american preponderance of the uh, patellar resurface if you see this paper uh 2000 to 2014 uh they see uh these things 82% united states and rest of the whole world all the registries put together 35 degrees 35% so meta analysis have demonstrated no difference in anterior knee pain which david also considered to so recent swedish registry data showed a reverse trend towards high revision rates after resurfacing obviously because you got n number of complications so why americans have take in the world or ransack the world just like a trump says our country and rest of the world i feel that the americans are very very biased and they want to resurface the patella for medical legal complication more than anything else i'm sorry to say that if i offend any of my north american friends so be it the resurface versus non resurface patella in total arthroplasty richard friedman allen paper routine resurfacing is not necessary while surgeons in other countries routinely avoid resurfacing the patella surgeons in the united states continue to favor the practice at higher rate why whether the interpretation of total joint replacement surgery as a subtotal knee replacement medical legal implication or is it based on scientific conviction i doubt very much i doubt very much because in america even if you don't replace patella they will say you have got done subtotal knee replacement and that's a juicy case for somebody to sue and no surgeon in his good frame of mind takes that uh, unnecessary nuisance so that is my feeling that's why you can see that literature comes from america again and again parading the benefits of the patella resurfacement i can't see that any part of the world and i'm always very very respectful because i worked for 10 years in england england is the most balanced country as far as the science and the propagation of science is concerned and they do not have any financial or medico legal perspectives while treating a patient it is a holistic treatment of the patient i'm very very glad that i was part of it so in england also i wanted david's opinion it is not rampant and the patellar resurface event has not caught up the way it is in north america because they put more emphasis on size and outcomes now let me come to the middle part i think somebody is uh, like parax team or somebody might be saying that i totally disagree with that because i am either catholic or protestant for my life i don't become a protestant on a sunday and become catholic excuse me that the groba yeah yes sir coming It's, last uh, slide last too long so last can slide. you uh, okay. come to the last slide come there yeah, okay so patellar tissue thing five year clinical and economic results are like that and outcomes in uk again another important point is when you got a uk nobody talks about patellar femoral arthritis then why should you talk about now so these are my important points and there are so many pitfalls in the published comparisons conclusions patellar resurfacing is not necessary in total knee arthroplasty provided we optimize the patellar thickness tracking limb alignment and component positioning literature does not support improved clinical outcomes after resurfacing complications of resurfacing are catastrophic and difficult to treat anterior knee pain is poorly understood and multifactorial reoperation rates are artificially inflated so end of the day 
the patella is like your mother in law you should acknowledge her presence ensure that she tracks comfortably in the family of totally arthroplasty but don't give unwarranted respect more than she deserves dear david i have three questions for you final slide when intraoperative assessment of patella thickness tracking tilt are all optimal what additional benefit do we gain by resurfacing the patella number 2 With poor satisfaction and outcomes of the secondary patella resurfacing for anterior knee pain, how do you justify resurfacing in all primary total knees? Third question: Why mild to moderate patella femoral arthritis in patients undergoing unicondylar is not resulting in anterior knee pain and poor outcomes? Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Groba, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Most of your talk is uh, uh, very similar to oh. my experience. Uh, the most impressive uh, content is that you can prevent anterior knee pain by good surgical technique, almost yeah. 100%. Percent. So Dr. David Barrett, Dr. Barrett, do you hear me? Uh, you have to unmute, unmute Dr. David. Okay. No, so, um, un uncharacteristically, I had muted myself. Usually, it's very difficult to stop me talking. Um, so, uh -huh. so, so I thought that was a great presentation by Garaba. Right. He's a great presenter. He's got great experience. And, and we are very much aligned in that anterior knee pain is not about the patella. It is about how you handle the soft tissues, the orientation of femur, and tibiofemoral stability. Um, right. And uh, so I would agree with uh, uh, Grava and yourself, Professor Song, that um, it's actually a surgical technique. If we, if we have 100% resurfacing in the, in the States and 0% in India, we should be able to show a difference. And we can't, okay? Right. So I, I believe in many ways we're very close. I think we might see a development of a particular area why it might be uh, beneficial to resurface the patella, but it's a small group of deformed, mm -hmm. unusual patellas where we want to ensure conformity between the, the artificial trochlea and the patella itself. But I, I think the take home message is very much as Garava said, and, and, and I hoped I showed, that it's about the whole soft tissue envelope around the front of the knee. Okay. Yes, so Professor Song, you can just give a summary and we can open it up for questions from the... Right, panel. right. Uh, before going into a discussion, I'm going to uh, show you my case a little bit. Uh, I want to hear your opinion. Sure. Uh, how can I... My... Yeah, we can see the screen now. Okay, before I uh, talk, uh, Dr. Barrett, do you hear me? Yes, I got you. Uh, you're talking mainly uh, focus on uh, biomechanical study and uh, changing new anatomic uh, patella design can uh, reduce, prevent complication of patellofemoral joint replacement. So do you have any uh, clinical experience using a new design patella to reduce uh, patella femoral complications. Sure, yeah. So that was... Um, Can you so give I us showed, a detail a little bit? Yeah, so I, I showed um, four, four studies where we had compared a redesigned patella femoral uh, surface against an existing patella dome. And so in each of those four uh, 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 case control studies, we were able to show a significant difference in improvement against a dome patella. So that means that by redesigning the uh, uh, patella implant, we can actually increase the efficiency and increase the stability. But that was a comparison between two different patella designs, two different trochlear designs. So it, it's not really the evidence that you would want to say that resurfacing is better than unresurfaced knees. But what we can show is that there is an effect of design on the patellofemoral uh, joint and the patellofemoral function. Okay. And uh, Dr. Uh, Grab already? Yes, sir. You talking about good surgical technique is uh, pretty much important to reduce and prevent complication of the patellofemoral joint. 
what is the main key component of surgical technique, good surgical technique? Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, the main key technical of the anterior knee pain, as far as I understood over the last 20 years, is the proper rotation of the femoral implant. That is a very important point. Number two, the patellar overstuffing should be avoided. And number three, no thumb patellar tracking is mandatory. Sometimes patella tilts angle, even that you should not tolerate. Patella should beautifully out of as 10 commandments, which I envisage one of the commandments is patella should go all over like this. You should not even lift it up even two, three millimeters in any uh, flexion of the joint. These three are paramount importance and all three are entirely independent of the resurgence of the patella. And another important point, which uh, a lot of people say that over the years, there are a lot of patellar friendly designs have come, no doubt. But I've been doing the old so-called PFC Sigma from the last 20 years. I've been doing 10 to 12 companies in plants. All of them are not same. So none of them has given or come to me with a significant anterior pain. The only okay. thing, as David okay, also said, enough. patellar clunk. Thank you. But that is Dr. Yeah. Is it good enough? Yeah. The first key thing is to get a... Uh, uh, Good uh, femoral rotation alignment. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. So anybody uh, who has a question to uh, Dr. Barrett and uh, ready? Yeah, I have it. Do okay, go ahead. I would like to ask uh, my brother from uh, England, David Barrett. Hi, David. So I, I, did, um, I published on the core, in the core last year, we look at the anthropometry between the Dutch and Indonesian. So the, the, the Caucasian and the Asian is pretty much different. If you look at the femur, even that the, the media ML and AP ratio is also different. And then if you look at the patella height and the, the white the ratio, and also the, the median patella width, which is, uh, you have a, it has a clinical impact when you, you with a, with a patella resurfacing. So my question is, when you do the, all the re research, it's, it's amazing. It's a very good. I, I've seen it uh, so many times. I enjoy it. But, the, but my question is, do you do also the, uh, the do, you, do you cover also the, the Asian patient in your study? So that's um, that's a really great question, uh, Nico. And, and it's lovely to see you. Um, uh, we haven't seen much of each other this year with all everything. But um, I think that's a really good point. And I was actually going to raise it when Garaba talked about his theory about the flexibility of the Indian knee. And I think that what we have only just become aware of through papers like yours is the completely different anatomical variation as we move across the populations of the world. And, and most total knee replacements up to about 2000, 2007 were designed using uh, the anthropomorphic measurements of white American males. And, and what we began to realize that as we moved across the world, the, the dimension of the Indian knee is completely different. The dimension of the Japanese knee is very different. And I think uh, Grava's point about the soft tissue flexibility is also really important. Um, and the culture where uh, if there's a squatting or kneeling culture, it's completely different. Um, I can't remember the last time I squatted. I always sit. So, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very different, much stiffer. And so I think, Nico, your point is well made, that there may be a very good uh, indication, as Gaurava says, in a highly flexible Asian knee, uh, not to resurface, uh, because you need that flexibility. The other thing, of course, is the patella is much smaller and much thinner. Uh, and so that uh, presents a little bit of a challenge uh, uh, to, uh, to the surgeon. And it may well be with thicker, heavier uh, Western patients, perhaps we should resurface. Uh, uh, but in lightweight, high flexion, uh, Asian population, small patella, it may be challenging. Good, thank you. Hey, Dr. Sanchetti? Yes. It's already 20 minutes uh, past allocated time. Can you uh, oh, we can extend keep, the time. Uh, If it's okay with you, we can extend the time. Okay, no then uh, I will uh, show you my case and uh, I want to hear. We, can, we have about 20 minutes more. So you can show your case and we can, I will, the other panelists and Dr. Ricky also has some questions. So after your case, we can take those questions. Okay, can you see my uh, slide? No, not yet. Not yet? 
No, I think you have to stop sharing and just uh, share again. Yeah, we can see now. Now you can see? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This yeah. is a 76-year-old female patient, as you see, has yeah. a severe advanced osteoarthritic change, patel, uh, femoral tibial joint, also a patellofemoral femoral joint. Has a pain for 10 years, and the range of motion is about 10 to 90 degrees. Dr. Uh, Barrett, how do you uh, how want to do uh, deal with the uh, patellofemoral femoral joint case like this? Okay, so I can see there's, uh, the, there's quite a lot of osteoporosis and a lot of bony collapse. And mm -hmm. I think that, so I would resurface the patella in this because I, I believe that is part of the symptoms. But I mm -hmm. think you would have to pay particular attention to the how you restore the joint height and the rotation of the femur. Because even mm -hmm. if I resurfaced uh, the patella, if I got the joint height wrong, I still will get anterior knee pain. So what we can see is the tibia has collapsed quite a lot in this case. And so the surgeon would have to be very careful about how they uh, made the joint, uh, the joint height or the joint line. So I still would resurface um, and I would choose the, perhaps to put a patella button quite high on the patella because the tendon is quite short. Okay, uh, was it, uh, is it uh, uh, routine or as a usual, your practice? So yes, I, I would resurface it, yeah. Okay, and the Dr. Uh, Groba? Yeah, well, Professor Song, as I said, mm -hmm. I never touched even a rheumatoid knee, never. Okay. As contrary to a lot of uh, consensus, never okay. touched a rheumatoid knee, even revision knee sounds are not touched. Here, okay. again, patella baha, as David was mentioning, uh, I'm okay. not terribly worried as far as oh. the patella tracks. I'll show you uh, how can I, how did I manage? So Dr. Groba, yeah. Talk. Yeah. I uh, do peripatella neuroplasty like this. Yeah. What I call circumcision. And then uh, osteophyte was removed around the patella. And I try to have a smooth color surface. And the uh, patella tracking seems to be uh, okay. This is a post x ray, five days. Patrofemoral joint is a well aligned. A lady patient has a good range of motion, 0 to 130. Tibial femoral joint seems to be uh, excellently aligned. There is how I did at this point. Anybody uh, have a comment on uh, this case, Dr. Sanchetti? Yeah, so Professor Song. Uh... It's nicely done, and I like your technique. It's similar to what we do when I don't resurface. But mm -hmm. I want to ask you, uh, do you resurface or you don't resurface all your cases? What's your philosophy? What's your practice? Is it like what Guruva said, selective resurface? Okay. What's your Just practice? Just like uh, Guruva and uh, Dr. Sanchetti. At the beginning of my practice, I try to do sometimes resurfacing, sometimes mm -hmm. not to do and sometimes selective uh, patellar resurfacing, but come to the conclusion, there's no differences between three techniques. Uh -huh. So do not resurface uh, gives me a lot of advantages, saving time, saving money, and uh, good clinical result. Okay, so, so you at the current time, you are not resurfacing your patella because no. you feel all three are similar results. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, Professor Song, that... I have a question. Professor uh -huh. Song, I have two questions to you. Mm -hmm. One is I saw that you do the denervations of the patella, and mm -hmm. um, we, we did a, a study and, and we published also this, uh, this uh, January, and uh, it shows that it does, I mean, like, you know, it is works only for a couple of months, but it doesn't work for the long term. Why? So, what is the, the why, why do you still do the, the nerfations? Do you think it works? If you're using what? The nerfations of your patella. The I'm sorry, I, I cannot hear you. Uh... Question, Nico? No, I, I saw that uh, Professor Song that the, the nerfations of the patella, circumferential yeah, denervation. Circumferential denervation. Yes. Denervation. Yes. 
Yeah, sometimes do, uh, sometimes I don't. It doesn't no. matter, I believe. So my second question okay. is, my second question is, I know that you are the pioneer of this uh, robotics in the world. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, all robotics is perfect. You know, like the femur, the cut and the TV cut, what is perfect. But how do you do the patellar resurfacing with the robotic? Uh, unfortunately, robot, uh, nothing to do with patella. Sorry. Yeah, that is what my concern is, right. you know. You can uh -huh. do it, you say that it's perfect operation, but then after that, the patient complain of anterior knee pain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So that is why we have a big problem uh, to solve this kind of problem. Uh, either way, resurfacing or non-resurfacing, still we don't have a complete, uh, complete uh, solution. So we need to Thank time you. to see uh, what happening next. Yes, uh, Guruva, you have a comment? Yeah, uh, Nicholas, I do macroplastics now. Yeah. The macro the robot will help you to position the sizing and uh, positioning of the total knee implants. So, in other words, all the five factors which will be enumerated for so-called anterior knee pain, half of them are addressed by the robot. So that is how you indirectly add, uh, reduce the patellofemoral femoral pro problems. So yeah, you put the right size, you will not overstuff it, you will move the station up and down depending on the posterior offset and you will see the rotations and everything is addressed. So those, those issues are solved. But you don't need a patella for a robotic actually. You, don't need you, you, you operate about 3,000, 4,000 a, a month and you yeah. still need the robot. That I don't <laughs> we do around seven or eight robotics <laughs> per day. Right. <laughs> I want to introduce our panelist uh, who is Dr. Ricky uh, Utapia. He's also the general secretary for APKS and he's practicing at the Pasar Rebo General Hospital in Jakarta. So Dr. Ricky, uh, you have any comments or any questions to make uh, on the patellar resurfacing controversy? Uh, thank you, Dr. Parra. Um, right until now, I, just, I chose not to uh, resurface patella, but, uh, but the reality, I'm still young, but, and I'm, I'm very open to every knowledge, but maybe I want to ask for, for Professor Barrett. Um, you know, that I'm very interested with the funnel design or funnel movement of the patella, but uh, in reality, uh, do we have such kind of implant that will accommodate uh, that biomechanics? And if so, uh, do we have also uh, the the whole package of implant, which is, which include the tibial and femoral joint, also uh, can accommodate uh, the, the 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 movement? Because we can we cannot separate the the patella femoral joint design and the tibia femoral joint. We should have those as a whole whole package, right? Thank yeah. you, yeah. Professor Barrett. So now that's a great question, Ricky. And, and um, so what, what you need to do when you're looking at, at uh, knees, you have to bear in mind a large number of knees were designed in the 80s and 90s. And at that time, we didn't quite understand about patellofemoral mechanics. And we also didn't really understand about tibiofemoral instability. And as Garava says, the often anterior knee pain is, is not about patellofemoral pain. It's actually tibiofemoral instability. And so we're seeing the femur slide forward on the tibia. And of course, that increases the extensor hood um, loading, which gives them pain. So anterior knee pain can often be the presenting uh, symptom for tibiofemoral instability. So it's worthwhile looking at the number of new de knee designs that are coming out and, and to start ask questions about the trochlear design, but also the conformity of the tibiofemoral joint. Because now we've identified that quite a lot of these knees slide forward. You want to make sure that when your knee slides back, there is a posterior rollback. So it is worth um, you know, getting in touch with the companies and saying, you know, what does your knee design do? And you'll see that now we understand a little bit more the kinematics, you'll see the design ethos changes, particularly around the trochlea um, and the tibiofemoral joint. So I would look for something that's fairly conforming in the tibiofemoral joint, but has a, uh, a fairly low or slim trochlea. But great question. Okay. Yes. Do you have any uh, question or comment to uh, Dr. Barrett or Dr. Roba? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I have uh, two questions for Dr. Barrett. Uh, uh, one is, uh, 
how do how do you think of the Dr. Graba's hypothesis thesis in which the fatal femoral, femoral pressure increased with less flexion in Western people? And uh, second is uh, uh, is the is patella height uh, considered before the surgery? Uh, patella bar or alta? Sure. So, so I think um, uh, your, your first question was about the soft tissue, and I think that's really, really important. And uh, I think what we've, what we've found as we've, as we've changed from knees that are designed by Americans for Americans, uh, they're, they're traditionally extremely broad. Um, and so that doesn't suit the Asian knee, which is much more narrow. So you'll see the, the, the redesign that we're seeing now, knees designed from 2005 onwards are much more narrow to fit the, the if you like, the, the more Asian, the more Eastern knee. Uh, and so that's, that's very important. The Telebaha, um, I think is more commonly seen uh, uh, East India uh, uh, into, into uh, China and Japan. And I think, it, it, and perhaps Garava would actually be better to speak about this than me, because I, I would share his view that um, actually it's not a huge problem provided you handle the soft tissues correctly. And the extensor hoods are just much more flexible in Asian knees. And so it's not a big deal. But Garava, take, take that one for me. Yeah, David, uh, as you rightly mm -hmm. said, uh, we got Patla Baha, we see more frequently than you people. And uh, even the revision scenario, sometimes our patella is literally touching the almost uh, lower tibial base plate, something sometimes. But uh, never ever we have a patient who comes because of that. The only caveat is here, provided you put the right size of the implants. A lot of the times, as you rightly said, by Americans, for Americans in the olden days, the lateral medial, the anteromedial medial is different, lateral anteroposterior is different, lateral medial is different. A lot of impingement on both sides. Now with that, this profile is come down, so that is addressed. Now, David, is there any way we can prove by digital marker? Because I can see that you've got a great uh, lab and a great experience in this uh, engineering. Is there any way we can so say 100 cohort of Asian patients and 100 Western patients by seeing these excursions? Is there any way we can do that? It's actually, Garav, that's a, that's a great way of looking at it. Uh, the answer is because there's so many different factors about how patients mm. report their pain, it's really difficult. To be honest, you can do it easily in some of those uh, computer studies I showed you because you can mm. control everything very accurately and you can show there are different uh, loading pressures in each, in each way. How that relates to the patients and they report their discomfort, though, is really difficult. And you made a great point that in unis, we don't pay any attention to the patellofemoral joint and we don't exactly. have any pain. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Sonny. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah. Okay, please go. Uh, uh, it's to Dr. Guruwar Eddy. How yeah. often, sir, do you, uh, in spite of a proper positioning of the femoral and tibial component, in spite of having good rotations and good balancing of the gaps, how often you see maltracking of patella in spite of your experience no, and then what you for it? Very, very seldom, Sunny, as, as we go along the learning curve. Initially, I used to do later release every second, third knee, if I remember right. Now it is hardly anything because now we know how exactly to put the rotation. But of course, now the robot has come, it has much more streamlined that. But you don't need a robot for a proper rotation. Right. I keep on telling my fellows, you should spend at least five minutes of your surgical time in seeing the rotation of the implant by putting the tibial plate right and the femoral plate right. Those are the two key steps in a knee replacement. Okay. And, uh, sorry, Dr. Sorry, I was just going to come in on the end of that to Sonny's question and, and, and about uh, Garava's point about, about lateral release. Um, what we know is that the two retinaculum, the medial retinaculum and the lateral retinaculum, are really important in controlling the movement of the patella early in flexion. And most of us will have done a medial approach, so we've lost the medial retinaculum. And then if we do a lateral release at the same time, we've lost control of the patella in the early flexion. So I, I think that if we can orientate the femur and avoid a lateral release, that would be um, uh, just perfect. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of lateral release and like Garava, I've done less and less as I've, I've carried on. The, I think it's to your question, Sonny, about what happens if you have a perfectly aligned 
prosthesis and you still have patellar maltracking, that would be one of the indications I would choose to resurface the patella because I know that the patella button and the trochlea are congruent. So sometimes that makes the patella more stable in yeah. a trochlear notch and would be my only indication for saying, okay, we're going to have to resurface this now. Okay, probably uh, my comment on the Sonny's question. If you do have a really good balance in uh, flexion extent and depth, the distal femoral rotational alignment, you will get never mismatch or patella instability. So if we have a really good balance in uh, flexion extension gap and uh, uh, well rotational alignment, you will have a good patella, patella tracking. No problem at all in the patella tracking. Okay, any other question or comment? Uh, I have Dantetti. a okay. question to both the speakers. Uh, excellent uh, points were presented. So both of you spoke about a little bit about the thickness of the patella and uh, David, you made a point that, you know, if you are not resurfacing the patella, there is a little bit of an imbalance between the patellofemoral joint because the thickness of the, the anterior cut, which we take maybe seven, eight, nine or 10 millimeters. And then what you resurface uh, or don't resurface can impact. So is there any way where we can actually measure the anterior cut and the patella cut and then decide uh, on whether to resurface or not to resurface? Can that be a kind of a guiding point to resurface or not to resurface? I would yeah. like to ask Dr. David first and then Guru, you can comment. Sure. So, uh, so Parag, what I try and do is um, uh, if I, I know that my trochlear for my uh, metal implant is six millimeters. So I want to measure how much bone I take off from the trochlear, but I would like to do it before I've taken it, because obviously if I've taken it off and it's too much, then it's too late for me to change things. So what I would advise the surgeons to do, and this is, they can use it with any implant, is you take the tibial stylus that you would normally use to measure the resection that you would make on the tibia when you make the tibial cut, you take the tibial stylus and put it in the anterior cup for the femoral jig. And, and then the stylus will come down on top of the trochlea. And you should be able to measure the sort of cut you're going to make. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly six uh, because we know the quads mechanism is uh, extendable. But if it measures 10, that gets me worried. And I might choose to change my femur from a four to a five which means that I won't take as much uh, uh, trochlea. So um, the surgeons can try this the next time they go and do a knee replacement, take the tibial stylus, put it in the anterior cup for their femoral jig and try and measure the bone and see how much you're gonna take off. Cause that would tell you if you're gonna take too much. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 believe, I believe in very simplicity. I don't even use the caliper to so see the patella thickness. I yeah. just shave the patella the convex sphere of the patella, the whatever the lateral medial facet, I shave it in such a way it becomes absolute flat. So that I just go there. That is my indicator. And my rationale is by making that, uh, I, I prepare the patella as though I'm going to put the button. I would say that way. So absolute flat. And then my rationale is uh, the flat patella will induce a beautiful homogeneous curtain. The so called, I was telling about the fibrous curtain. Rather than bumpy, it will become now fibrous easily. The curtain can slide, and so that is the way I do. So, yeah, so okay. I'm very conscious of the track. Yeah, I've seen Dr. Guruva do that technique. It's quite slick. He actually, you know, just kind of chamfers off the contours. And uh, yeah. a couple of cases which where he had to go in, he said that a beautiful capsule forms, and it kind Correct. of comes to the shape of the trochlear notch as nature would adapt. Yeah, and that's exactly. Uh, yeah. So I think we still don't have a good answer whether we should resurface or not resurface. So I think. But, but, uh, yeah, but time yeah. to end, can I ask uh, each speaker to give one message to the entire uh, uh, delegates because we have right now 900 people online watching us. So I want to leave all the delegates with a message. You know, some message. It need not be you resurface or you don't resurface. You know this particular war will always go on, but 
let us have a message for our delegates and this webinar gets watched again and again uh, in the next uh, few days so first dr gurwa <laughs> i thought you last <laughs> name <laughs> yeah uh, my my i don't want to be dogmatic and uh, see uh, especially for my colleagues in india and asian countries patella resurfacement is not needed at all any season or reason even inflammatory arthritis you don't need to touch the patella you don't even touch the patella even in revisions also provided that is a caveat you track the patella properly and you don't overstuff the patella properly and as david said i can see some uh, water in the argument that a heavy patient with a very thick musculature might be served better with a patelloplasty but not anyone else okay dr barat your <laughs> message to us right my my message to the world i suppose from here is that uh, okay. um, it, it probably doesn't make a difference i know that we have no, we have the great battles on the podium about cemented right. uncemented uh, patella not patella but i would uh -huh. say uh, to the surgeons i uh, i think the most important thing as gurava said is your technique if you are able to get tibio femoral stability with correct rotation of the femur then mm -hmm. to be honest the patella is a sesamoid bone it has a very little nerve supply uh, it's not key whether you resurface it or not it's just key that you balance the knee and respect the extensorhood because that does have a nerve supply and mm -hmm. it, it is the cause of pain for patients who have pain at the front of the knee or anterior knee pain so it's about the whole operation do that well and it probably doesn't matter whether you use a plastic kneecap or not and i can i use a plastic kneecap garava doesn't um we both have happy patients yeah okay i believe a uh, message from uh, both uh, excellent speakers is so well taken so dr sanchetti so before closing can you give us a, a comment from you no so I, i really you know my practice has been all around and as uh, dr guruva mentioned i first started uh, without resurfacing then i started resurfacing then i was resurfacing partially but today i resurface all because it does take a little time more i agree and it has to be the technique has to be good but uh, in my own practice and since it has been influenced by professor ranawat i i resurface uh, uh, all the patellas and the the rationale in doing that is that you know if we guru also mentioned about anterior knee pain and even though the cause is not related to that plastic there is a slight doubt in your uh, you know competitor or the patient doesn't get uh, complete relief then if something is left undone it is the patella so that is my whole concept and i think that is why i resurface all the patellas uh, as of today but uh, after hearing gurwa and after the long uh, list of papers he has said and his experience you know if someone doesn't that's fine but uh, also you heard dr david barrett and uh, you know i feel that if the knee is not flexing beyond 130 either way is good but i think beyond 130 or 135 then you're probably better off not resurfacing you know those are uh, uh, my comments on the whole issue but as i said earlier this debate can help us uh, debate with each other through our lifetime till the knee replacement surgery is continued so we don't have a good answer but i would be happy to hear the moderator's decision and the moderator's uh, final comments uh, to all of us with your experience professor song i'm sure you will give us the right uh, advice okay uh it has been a long uh, time excellent presentation from barat and uh, dr groba and uh, uh, excellent participation uh question and answer from the uh panelist so i think we all of us uh have a good uh, messages and ideas how to deal with the patella problem in anterior arthroplasty either way patella resurfacing or retention is up to the uh surgeon's preference in the clinical experience and uh uh a patient's uh, specific characteristics so it's a uh, uh, upon uh, depend upon the uh, various multifactorial 
uh, conditions. So we need to select those kind of problems according to uh, surgeon's experience and uh, preference. So if there is no more question or comment, may yeah. I close this session? Thank you. Okay, yeah, thanks uh, everyone. Thank you, and, uh, Graba. David, yeah, thank you so much. Thank Pleasure you. David. Uh, Take care. Graba, yeah. love it. I love it. Okay. Parag, thank you so much. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> thank you so much. I to thank uh, Professor Song okay. for moderating this session. I wish to thank Guru already, uh -huh. Dr. Dr. David Barrett, and the people who conducted this webinar, Dr. Sunny, Dr. Kailash, and also Dr. Ricky, who was our panelist. And I'm also happy to see the fellows from Professor Song, Dr. Kim, Jong, uh, Dr. Lee, and Dr. Wu. So thank you very much. And Ashok, uh, who's uh, our man behind the scene, Dr. Ashok Sham, who runs this through Ortho TV. Uh, thanks to you, Ashok, for this. Uh, the next webinar will be in two weeks' time, and we will keep you informed regarding the next debate or the next dilemma, what Ashok has in mind. Till then, thank you, everybody. And thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.